Okay. Hi everyone. I'm Christina. I'm the owner of um, a photography company called Christina Elisa Photography. Um, I do style product photography and just product photography in general for a lot of um, boutiques and little shops. Um, but I also have a couple of online styled stock photography shops um, on Etsy and Creative Market. Um, Etsy is Christina Elisa Images and Creative Market. If you just search for Christina Elisa Photography on Creative Market, um, Christina has no H. That happens a lot. I get an H put in it when um, it's just CRI. Uh, but anyway, there's a couple of shops there. And um, I think style stock photography is still relatively new. I don't think a lot of people um, really grasp the concept yet, or a lot of people may not be familiar or a little intimidated by um, having to edit the images um, once they get them. So I wanted to do some tutorials to show you that um, it really is pretty simple once you have a grasp on what you need to do. Um, it's not you know, totally straightforward the way you would think because sometimes you don't do all the right edits and it's going to end up looking a little bit fake. So I want to show you how to create your edits um, rather simply and the simple little tweaks that you can do to them to make them look more natural and like you actually took the picture of your product um, on top of the mock-up. So um, here we go. I'm going to try and get this into screen capture mode and we'll do a little bit of a Photoshop tutorial today. Um, and it's just going to be a simple overlay of your card or your photo um, on an envelope. So next time we may do something with um, frames or we might try different editing softwares. I know not everyone has Photoshop, but um, here we go. Let's see if I can get this going. Okay, so I have my file open. This is image number 149. Um, these are pretty new on uh, Etsy and Creative Market. Um, this one I have popped down to an Instagram size. I like to add um, Instagram bonuses a lot, uh, but when you purchase the item, you would get the actual full size photo. Um, so what I have here is just a simple little mock-up with an envelope here, um, and I want to put a um, photo or a print or card uh, on top of the envelope. So how I would do that, first I would make a new layer um, and I would go up to my little rectangular tool here uh, and I try to sort of stay within the parameters of the envelope because you don't want to make it look like it's too big for it to fit in there. Um, so that looks okay to me. Um, I'm going to go up here to edit and fill the image and you have your options of your background or foreground color. I like to just pick color most of the time and I've already done this but I picked a color from a flower. Um, sort of highlight that. Uh, hit OK and OK on your fill and there you go you have your filled image. So now um, I don't really like the way that is laying so I'm going to transform it. I just did a control T uh, to transform the, I guess, the orientation of how it's laying. And I sort of, I think if I were doing this at home, um, I'd actually lay this out just slightly over my, um, my envelope like that. Not exactly perfect, but not totally out of line either. So um, what I will do, I'll just deselect that. Um, I'll add a little bit of text on there too. Um, I like to have script. Why is it doing that spinny wheel? There we go. All right. Hello. Hello. Whoops. Sorry, it's going a little bit slow because of the recording. So I'll do a control T on this too. And just, since it is taking a little bit of time, I'm not going to try to make it absolutely perfect. Um, I think that looks okay. Um, so what I will do now, I'll take this text and I'll do a Command E to flatten it onto the next layer below it. So now it's all um, as if it were one little print or card. So, you know, that looks cute, but... Um, it doesn't look exactly quite real. So what I like to do from here 
is right click on that layer with the card and go to blending options. And on this particular one, I would add a drop shadow and you can see, okay, if you, you have to check it and then you need to actually check on the, um, uh, the little area where it says drop shadow to get the options for the drop shadow. And um, these are probably some settings I used fairly recently, but the opacity for me is a little too much and I think it's just a little too big because a little card like that would not, not really make a huge shadow. Um, let's see, that's making it a little more harsh. So try and change the angle of the light a tiny bit. Um, let me see. So you kind of need to play with these just a tiny bit to see until you get what you think looks good. And I think that looks pretty natural as far as what um, a little card would do. It's probably more still than what a, a flat piece of paper would do, but um, you know, you still want it to be somewhat noticeable so, so people can tell in the picture. Um, as far as telling how the shadow falls, um, once your eye is sort of trained, you can tell which way the shadow is going. This picture has very, very few shadows, so that's a little bit <laughs> trickier. Um, but what you can do uh, if you need help figuring it out is just click one of these um, to get your color picker tool up. Um, and you can sort of click through and here you'll see if your image is like the pure white is 255, 255, 255. So the closer you get to things, it's going to change a little bit. So there's probably a tiny bit of shadow here. Um, but this, if you look over here, it's 249, 246, 243. So the light is probably coming, you know, it's casting a shadow down this way. So actually, I think we may want to... Yeah, because that's back to 255. I think we may want to go back and change the drop shadow a little bit. Um, maybe more at an angle like that. And now that it's on the white, you notice it a lot more. So I'll just change the opacity a couple of settings to make it less, less of a harsh shadow, but definitely still there. Um, and I think that looks pretty good. So you can just go ahead and flatten your image, Control E, um, and save it from there, however you would like to save it. Uh, the next thing I'll show you guys is basically the same thing. Um, but for instance, you may be a photographer, um, but you don't have time to style all these images, but you want something cute to show your customers maybe what you would package for them. Um, so I have a picture here I took of my son. Um, I'm just going to open it, copy it. And put it on a new la layer. <clears throat> and this file, compared to the little Instagram image, is enormous. It's a full-sized uh, image. Um, so here we go. I'm just going to trim it down. Um, and this little looks like a chain link I hit up there. What that does is it actually locks the perspective. So if you have your own um, files you've either designed or photos you've taken uh, and you don't want to distort them when you are doing this, I'm sorry, it takes about a hundred times, um, you just hit that little, that little lock perspective button and there you go. You've got something that is more the size uh, and not distorted of uh, what you're looking to do. So the envelope here is a little bit more square than rectangular. The photo, of course, is rectangular. So what I'll do, I'll just trim this a little bit. Um, I'll take that rectangular tool, rectangular marquee tool, um, select that area, and since I'm on this layer, I'm going to just erase that part. There we go. So that's done. And now I can take that Control-T to transform it again. I'll give it about the same little tilt I gave the other card. And that looks cute to me. 
I will right click again and it saves my um, blending options from the last time I was working on this. So if I add the drop shadow, oops, actually I didn't save the image, so it, it saved what I started with. I'll give it about the same angle, a lot less opacity, drop these down all just a tiny bit, and you sort of do it by eye. I'm sorry, there's no exact science to how you get this done, but once you play with it a few times, you will see that it's not quite as intimidating. Um, I used to try and overanalyze it and that really didn't help me. So <laughs> just trying to um, sort of see what blends in with the picture uh, works for me the best. So there we go. Um, I think that looks good too. Command E again. And you've got your flattened image that you can save and now you can put this on your social media, your website, um, whatever marketing materials you need. I do give you full-sized images for um, when you download the style stock photography so that you can preserve the option to print these out on, you know, a, a pamphlet you may be giving out to prospective clients or uh, if you want to make signs to hang inside your studio, something like that. Um, you can always do that, but I do recommend you save these at 72 dpi for um, web resolution. It'll make it a lot smaller. Um, the colors will fit with what um, the requirements are for web usage, and it's not going to slow down your website or your social media site because if you keep downloading these huge pictures, it will definitely slow it down. So anyway, that will help a lot and hopefully things will load okay. I would love to hear from you guys. If you have any questions, um, just shoot me an email. There's a contact me form on my website or you can also um, leave comment here or just send me a message on Etsy or Creative Market. All right, I'll talk to you guys soon. Okay, I'm sorry. I forgot one more thing that I like to do over here on the effects. I still, I like to change one more thing. I'm gonna go back to blending options and I'm going to give it a gradient overlay right here. So check that, click on gradient, um, and I'm going to give this pretty much the same angle of light that we gave the, um, the drop shadow, because it would be looking like that. So um, you can see, I mean, if I make it very opaque, you'll see over here on the right um, where which way the gradient is going. So that would be, you know, pretty harsh on the bottom. Bottom right, it would make it very dark. I'm gonna give it kind of a light gradient because I think the um, overall image is very bright and pretty evenly um, lit. So I'll change the angle a tiny bit. I don't like how that's going kind of off kilter to one side. So that's a little more even. Um, I will give this, if you take a look here, I have the opacity set pretty high on 71. Um, and that is way too much. So sort of like the rule for applying makeup, right? You want it on, but you don't want anyone to know that it's on. So you make it pretty light. So that's nothing. And I'll just give it, what? Even that looks like too much to me. There you go. That 7% um, or so, not very much, but it's there. And your eye can't really tell, but when you're looking at the image, the brain is sort of processing that that shadow is actually there. So if you want to quickly look at the comparison of what it looks like without either of those effects on, um, just turn effects off and you see that, um, you know, that sort of definition of space kind of goes away and it sort of looks like it's just blending right into that white right there. But if we put the effects on, um, you have a little bit of a difference there, a little contrast. Uh, just to make it look a little more real. And um, I think that looks like something you could have just taken a shot of yourself and not um, that you bought this stock image and then tried to create something else over it. So those are the couple of effects I do. And then that's when I would go down and flatten it. And there you go. You have your image that you can save as you like. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.